Okay, so welcome back. Um, this is the first in a series I'm going to do on understanding electronics. And if you've ever tried to understand electronics before, you can see it can get very, very complex. Um, a lot of equations, a lot of head scratching, trying to figure out what, what they're talking about. So the, the goal of this series is to give you some real world analogies between the electronics concepts and simple uh, concepts that we've kind of touched on in some of the other previous videos. And we're going to relate some of the um, electronics devices called active devices like transistors and MOSFETs. We're going to relate those to some very simple concepts in the uh, water world, hydraulics. So it'll help you much better understand. Now, again, keep in mind that these are just basic concepts. They don't always apply in every situation. There's not a perfect uh, correspondence between the water world and the electronics world. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. You have to know what you're talking about. But at least this will get you in the door, understanding some of the basic concepts. A lot of the stuff is really not as difficult as it might seem in the beginning when you see all these equations and graphs and everything. So um, I encourage you to, to go through this. What we're going to do is we're going to first, in this video, talk about the basic concepts. Then we're going to, in the next video, we're going to set up some software simulations um, of some real world devices so we can actually play around and see what happens. And then after that, we're going to um, we're going to do some bench testing on some uh, real world MOSFETs that we have already simulated in the second video and see if it matches up to the spec sheets and what we expect and hopefully give us a much better understanding of um, you know how this all works. So in our previous videos we talked about the similarities between the water world and the electrical world. In our introduction to electricity we talked about it and also in our part one of debunking power supply myths we talked in uh, a great length about um, the basics of electricity and how, um, how it all works and how it's similar to the world of uh, water. Um, there are a number of parts uh, in the water world that correspond very closely to the electrical world. We talked about how, for example, in a pipe, a water pipe, you have water pressure, and that is very similar to in the electrical world you have invisible electrons flowing and the pressure of the electricity in that wire is very similar to the pressure of water in a pipe. Unfortunately, with electricity, you can't really see it. So, um, but it, it acts very similarly and we'll see that in, um, in the next video. Now, the other thing we pointed to was that the flow of water in, in, in a water pipe is very analogous to the flow of electricity in a wire. And we said flow of, a flow of water in a pipe, which is measured often in gallons per minute, is very similar to the amps or rate of current flow in an electrical wire. So we've got voltage and we've got current that are very similar in both worlds. Uh, we also talked about how resistance uh, or blocking the flow of water in a water pipe is very similar to resistance or blocking the flow of electricity in a wire. So those are all very um, similar aspects of the two worlds. And luckily, it turns out that in the world of electronics, some of those analogies um, can be extended into electronics. And what we talked about in the previous videos, I've got here two components. One is a simple water valve, and it's called a gate valve. And you will see that, surprisingly, some of the terminology in the water world is very similar to the terminology in the electronics world. And I've got here a MOSFET, which we will be talking about in more detail, but it's basically a transistor. It's a fancy transistor, and it's got three pins. And uh, these two devices are very, very, very similar in many ways. And if you, you can understand a basic water valve, uh, something you can touch and see and understand, it's a lot easier to understand the world of transistors and MOSFETs. So the water valve we talked about before has 
basically, um, if you look inside of this valve, you can see that it's closed. And this, again, is called a gate valve. And the way it operates is I turn the handle, and as I spin it, you can see the gate of the valve starting to open. And it's allowing water to flow through. So you can imagine if there's water coming down into this uh, valve, if it's fully closed, there is a, there's no flow of, there's no current, no flow of water, and there's a lot of pressure, water pressure built up on this side, and there's nothing coming through here, so there's very little or zero pressure on this side. So you can see there is a pressure drop or a pressure differential between this input and this output. And again, this gate is controlled by something completely unrelated to the pressure and the current. It's basically a uh, valve that is adjusting, controlling the resistance of this valve. So if I open it up completely, there's virtually no resistance, which means there's no voltage dropped across here. There's going to be a little bit because it constricts the flow a little bit, but there's little or no voltage drop, and you see most uh, lots of current flowing through because it's fully open. So you can see the basic concept here is I've got a controller, which is this handle, and it is controlling the resistance of this valve, okay? So I'm applying a pressure to this valve to turn it, and it is adjusting the resistance of this gate valve, all right? So you can see that it's a very simple concept, and this will be very useful when we're looking at a MOSFET or any other transistor. Parts of this analogy will apply directly. Now, let's say I've got this closed completely, all right? If I want to open it completely, it's going to take me one, two, three, maybe four complete turns to get this open, all right? So that tells you this is relatively insensitive to this, um, the pressure, the force we're putting on this valve. It takes a lot to get this open. Now, another thing I want you to see is that if it's fully closed, watch what happens when I turn this valve. You can see I'm turning it, but nothing's happening, okay? So I have to turn it a certain amount for it to start opening. And here you can go, I've already turned to like a half a turn, and now it's just barely starting to open, all right? So that's going to be another analogy that's going to apply in the world of MOSFETs, where you have to apply a certain voltage or pressure to this, this uh, valve in order for it to just start opening. Now, the other thing is, let's say it's closed, it's fully closed. As you can see, the gate is closed. If I keep turning it closed, it's not going to do anything, okay? It's basically, that's all you can do. You can apply as much pressure as you want, but it's still going to stay closed. And on the other end, if I open it up completely, see, I'm adjusting the resistance by, by turning this uh, gate valve. If I open it up completely, there's a, <clears throat> a point at which it's fully open, and I can keep turning it, and it won't open anymore. It's letting maximum current flow through the valve. So we could call this a saturation point, where the valve is saturated. It's open as far as it can be, and you can apply as much voltage as you want, and you're not going to get anything more out of it. So these are some basic concepts that are going to apply in the world of uh, MOSFETs, which we're going to talk about um, in this series. Now again, this is a gate valve, and you can see, you can visualize maybe that you've got three inputs or outputs to this valve. You've got this handle, which is one input. We could call that the gate, the gate handle. Uh, and then you've got the, this input and an output, or input-output, however you want to have it. So you basically got this input, which you input force to open or close the valve, to control the valve. 
and then you've got in another input or output. So you've got basically three terminals that are of importance. You've got a controller, and then you've got the input and output for the, um, the resulting flow. And you can see if you look at a MOSFET, it also has three terminals. And surprisingly, this first terminal here is called a gate. This second one is called a drain, the middle one, and this one is called a source. So you can imagine that this is the gate of the water valve, and this is the source, and this is the drain, okay? So you can start to see how these probably are very, very similar in how they function. You basically control this valve, this MOSFET valve, by adjusting the voltage on this pin, which is like adjusting the pressure on this valve handle, you adjust the, the voltage on the gate, which is like this, and then between this pin, the, the middle pin, and the other, other side pin, you will have current flow or water flow because this varying the voltage on this pin is basically adjusting the resistance between these two other pins, okay? It's very, very similar to this. So you can view a MOSFET as a very simple water valve, okay? And we, as we showed before, it probably takes some minimum amount of voltage to turn this on, like we showed here. We said, you know, I've got to turn it maybe half a turn and finally it's going to start opening, okay? So there's probably, as we can see with this valve, there's probably a minimum amount of voltage or pressure we're going to have to apply to this in order for this to start uh, to, to open and so that we can vary the resistance. Now the other thing about this valve is we noticed it takes maybe four complete turns, a lot of pressure and force to open this. Now with a MOSFET, in fact, um, this is a very sensitive mechanism, all right? It's not requiring all this force. The difference between closed and fully open might be only a fraction of one turn. It's very, very sensitive. So if I can, if I had a very sensitive valve, I could turn it just a little bit and it would be open completely. And that's the way the MOSFET works. There's a very slight difference between the voltage on this gate that has this completely closed and has it completely open. Okay, so that's something else to keep in mind. Okay, so I hope that helps um, with some of the basic electronics concepts. Like I said, next video we're going to talk about how to um, set up a basic LT SPICE simulation of a MOSFET and how to get the download the model and install it. And um, after that, we're going to do some simulations to see how things actually correspond to, you know, what you'd expect from seeing on the spec sheets and you know what we've learned so far. And then we're going to do some bench testing uh, on an actual device in the uh, following video. So hope this all helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.